Have you ever wondered why in the Lord's Prayer we pray, Thy will be done? Recently, someone left a comment on one of my videos that made me think about this question. Why do we pray, Thy will be done? Is it simply a prayer of submission, like the prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he says, Not my will, but yours be done? As Calvinists, with a high view of God's sovereignty, we might ask, why else would we pray for God's will to be done? It's not like anything we do or pray is going to prevent it from coming to pass, right? To understand what God's will means in the context of the Lord's Prayer, we must first look at how it's used, how that word, the, the word will, is used in the Bible more broadly. Upon doing so, we'll quickly realize that there are at least two different ways that the word will of God can be used, is understood in, in the biblical texts. On one hand, there are passages like Psalm 115.3, which say, Our God is in the heavens, he does all that he pleases. And Daniel 4.32, the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. In these cases, the implication is that God's will is unassailable. Nothing is going to prevent it from coming to pass. But then other passages seem to suggest that people can violate God's will. For example, Matthew 7.21, uh, in that passage, Jesus says, Some do not do the will of my Father. Similarly, many passages call on believers to obey or to do the will of God, such as Psalm 143.10, Teach me to do your will, and Ephesians 6.6, 6, Doing the will of God from the heart. So these texts imply that it, it, that it is possible to not do God's will. Now, naturally, theologians will want to come up with fancy names for these two aspects of God's will, and sure enough, we've got the decretive will, which refers to God's decrees, uh, what God decrees will happen, his sovereign, his efficacious will. The other aspect would be God's preceptive will, that is, his precepts or his commands that we all disobey when we sin. These two sides of God's will appear most famously in two biblical narratives. In the first one, God's preceptive will is violated when the brothers of Joseph sinfully sell him into slavery. But God uses their sin to fulfill his decretive will in order that many people be kept alive. Uh, from, Psalm, uh, sorry, from Genesis 50 verse 20. The second example is when lawless men, violators of God's preceptive will, kill Jesus on the cross according to the definite plan of God, that is, his decretive will, Acts 2.23. Now at this point, we can investigate which of these two aspects of God's will is being referred to by Jesus in the Lord's Prayer. Context gives us a clue. The, the next phrase, on earth as it is in heaven, seems unnecessary if we're talking about God's decretive will, because God's decretive will is being fulfilled perfectly in both places already. On the other hand, if God's preceptive will is in view, then the pairing makes a little bit more sense. God's commands are currently being followed by the angels and saints in heaven, but not by humans on earth. So praying, thy will be done, becomes a prayer that life on earth become more like life in heaven. The next step in our study might be to see how wiser theologians than ourselves have understood this passage. In this case, the Reformed Catechisms are a great starting point, since explanations of the Lord's Prayer are one of their primary elements. For example, the Westminster Shorter Catechism in Answer 103 says that in this petition of the Lord's Prayer, we pray that God, by His grace, would make us able and willing to know, obey, and submit to His will in all things, as the angels do in heaven. This language corresponds nicely to what we've said so far about God's preceptive will, so it sounds like we're on the right track. And indeed, when we examine the writings of many other Reformed theologians like John Calvin, Herman Bavinck, and John Frame, we see them draw clear connections to God's preceptive will. Still, we shouldn't be too dogmatic. The great 17th century theologian Francis Turretin believed that this phrase refers to both the decretive and the preceptive aspects of God's will, not just the latter. 
Either way, we can agree that God's perceptive will, his commands, are at least partly in view when we pray, thy will be done in the Lord's Prayer. This is not merely asking God to do what he's going to do anyway. Instead, it is a prayer that you and I, our families, our churches, and all mankind will joyfully obey God more and more. It is a prayer that the pain and darkness and sin around us and in us will be increasingly transformed into the love and peace and righteousness that prevails in heaven. As we see and personally experience trials during this earthly life, I hope that the value of this prayer that Jesus taught us becomes more and more evident to all of us. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.